It will clear all the related emissions related diagnostic information, engine off and key on. So all my lights are on the dashboard at the moment and I'm going to go and try and read the live data and see. We've got a little graph now. So this is all on the OBD2. Absolute throttle position. Right, let's try that one. Accelerator pedal position. Let's try that. So that even though this launch unit is about a third of the price, do you actually need to spend £400 a more advanced diagnostic? We've got a raise codes, trouble codes. Let's go and see what the codes are. Okay, I'm going to start the car. Look at that! The light went out! <laughs> Afternoon. I thought I'd get the launch out. I'm going to try and clear a code on my Fiat, even though my launch actually is from Mercedes, the one that I just passed. Hmm. And a nice cup of chai too. So when I start the car, I've got this uh, engine management light there staying on. So let's have a little look, plug the old launch in and see what it can tell me, even though, as I said, it's not really for the Mercedes, but you can do other OBD2 diagnostic. So I've been playing with this little launch actually since I did my last review and I've really got to grips with it now. I am loving the size of it. Look how small that is. You can literally put it in your pocket. I found before I couldn't quite get to come back out of the menu and I did something and when I pressed it, it went right the way back out and I had to do the whole scan again. I've actually found since that there's something I was pressing which wasn't quite right and I'm going to bring that up in a second. Since I've been uh, playing with it and starting to get familiar with the menus and everything, it's a lot more straightforward and it's even better than I first thought. So let's plug her in and let's get this little light bulb hopefully cleared off me Fiat 500. Right, so what we're going to do is go into OBD2. Make sure the key is on in the ignition. You don't have to start the car, but you just do it so that the lights come on the dash. And let's see what it can see. All right, looking at the OBD2 ISO CAN bus. All right, vehicle identification number. So it says not applicable because maybe that's because we're using the OBD2. Right, so I'm going to go, look, here we go. DTCs in the ECU has got one. Um, so let's enter that. Um, and then it's here, read fault codes. So let's go into that one. Now you have to choose the car. There it is, Fiat. Right, there we are. Throttle position signal implausible. So that's current, which means it's stored. Right now, I was pressing this back button here before on my Mercedes. That's not the one you want to press. You want to press this little arrow back button there. Uh, there's also one that you can escape the whole menu on the right hand side. So let's just press this one and then it goes clear fault code. So let's go into that. It will clear all the related emissions, related diagnostic information, engine off and key on, which is exactly the status. DTCs have been cleared press yes so all my lights are on the dashboard at the moment because I've got the key turned to the uh, just before you crank position so I'm gonna start the car now and let's now see if that engine yellow warning light goes off no it doesn't okay let's go back into it and see what's going on and I'm going to go and try and read the live data and see. Absolute throttle position stored on the ECU. So let's have a look. Um, let's hit that and just see DTC stored. So we've got value of one. What's this one do? Can I go into it? So if I, oh, look, we've got a little graph now. So this is all on the OBD2. I'm just giving it a rev. I can see that the graph is going along. Right, okay, let's go back. And I'm going to go back again. Absolute throttle position. Right, let's try that one. 
This is 87.451. Not too sure what that means, but it's given me this info at least. Accelerator pedal position. Let's try that. 16.471. And as I press it, you can see that I'm getting this fluctuation. So it's live data. All right, so what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in my Autel Maxicom. And the point I'm trying to put across is that even though this launch unit is about a third of the price, do you actually need to spend nearly a £400 price bracket on a more advanced diagnostic? Because if this doesn't clear it, then you're no better off. And that's my point is, you need to think to yourself, if you've only got a couple of cars and you're just wanting to, peace of mind, just have a little look and understand what the issue is, perhaps before you take it somewhere, or maybe you want to try and fix a problem yourself. That code, by the way, which is the throttle position sensor, quite often is a loose connection on the pedal. I did have a quick look down there. Everything's dry. There doesn't look to be anything loose. But nevertheless, let's get this Autel out and see what this has to say for itself. So let's go to Diagnostic, and we're going to have a look for Fiat. So it's on along the top on this one, it's got the countries. There's Fiat. I've already downloaded this. Make sure the key is on. Go for automatic search. It's the same idea, you know, it should automatically find the VIN number, just like the launch. Um, in fact, that is it there, I think. Press OK. And that's uh, another nice thing. Obviously, this has remembered it. So there's the details. Comes up as a Cinquecento 500. It's obviously the same car. Let's see what it can see. So it's going to run through all the bits that it can. This will hopefully give me a little bit more info. As I said, I'm still very happy with this launch. If you look at the difference in the size, it's a lovely little size and it's still a great bit of kit for what it is. Right, that's the scan finished. So let's have a look and see what it's found. So diagnosis, um, let's go auto scan. That's just gonna go and find all of the control units and modules that this Autel can talk to with the Fiat. Look straight away, ECM engine control module. We've got three faults. ABS, two faults. Airbag, a fault. Now, I know what that fault is because I purposely disconnected the airbag just to kind of play with the launch. Um, so I can clear that now. Quite often when you get a fault, it'll have a knock-on effect with other items. So it doesn't necessarily mean you've got three separate individual faults, but the ABS, I know on my Mercedes, if there's an issue with that, it'll knock out my cruise control. It'll also knock out my um, SBC, which is the Sensatonic Brake Control. Right, so let's go into the first one, Engine Control Module. Uh, trouble codes, let's go straight into it, shall we? Um, we've got erase codes, trouble codes. Let's go and see what the codes are. So, stored, we have a mobilizer, uh, brake and acceleration pedal, coherence, signal compare failure. Ah, right, okay, so the brake and the accelerator, they should be working independently. And maybe that's why it's thrown that fault on the dash. What's the next one? Accelerator pedal, potentiometer, one and two, uh, congruence signal compare failure again you know it's talking about the same type of issue there right so let's clear these codes first and then see how we get on so let's have a look at the dashboard you can see the fault is on my dash there and then I'm gonna erase those codes so let's have a look at that yellow warning light all right so let's press erase codes and see what happens Ignition on and engine off. Say so yes. DTCs and freeze data will be deleted. So press yes. Codes have been successfully erased. Return to the function menu and tap read codes to verify. And it says system pass and there is no fault codes detected. Right, so the big test now, if I turn the key on the dash and turn it back on again, will the light go off? Still there. Let's start the engine. And we still got that light there. Let's go back into trouble codes.
and it's still seeing it stored there. So I'm getting those three codes come straight back again. That tells me that I've got some sort of hard issue, some fault there. Right, let's escape that and escape that again. I'm going to go into ABS brakes. Let's have a look at that first. And let's have a look at trouble codes. Battery voltage below threshold, engine control unit, bus signal invalid. Okay, so let's escape that. We'll go erase codes. Engine off. Ignition on. Yes. Yes again. Codes have been erased. Okay. And escape. Right, so ABS brakes, there's no fault. Now, if I start the car, let's see if it comes back on again. I'm gonna press the brake. It hasn't come back, but I've still got my fault light on my dash. So, now that I've cleared the ABS, I wonder if I go into my engine control module one more time, turn the engine off, Um, go into a race codes because I know that they're there. So the ignition is on, engine is off, yes. And then yes again. Press OK. And escape. Right. There's no, there's no uh, uh, errors coming up, but I haven't done anything. I'm going to start the car. Let's lift my auto and see what's happened. And the code and the light is still there. Okay. Body controller. So now I've just got these two faults. It's interesting how it's saying now that that's passed, which is excellent. So let's clear that one. Uh, so let's go and press OK. This is the body control, which. Uh, so let's go into trouble codes. So trouble code says check configuration failed, incorrect component installed. Right, okay, well let's escape that. Let's erase the code and see if it comes back. Engine ignition on, engine off. Ignition on. Engine off, yes. Yes, that it's gonna delete it. And yes again. Right, escape that. So now, out of all those faults that I had, and the nice thing about the Autel Maxicom, it puts all the faults at the top of the list. I've got one more there, which is the airbag. But it's strange that I don't have an airbag light on my dash, but we might as well clear it. Um, right, so into that one. Trouble codes. Should say driver's side. Front driver's side, yep, yeah, because I, I pulled the circuit on that, so let's... Escape that and erase the code. Okay, and yes again. Codes have been erased, good. Right, and escape that. Okay, I'm gonna start the car. I now have no faults, but I might run another scan and see what happens. All right, let's start the car. Oh, look at that! Look at that! The light went out! <laughs> Woo! And I've got no faults. But would you look at that? Right, little lessons learned. Let's have a talk about this. So, lessons learned. What can we take away from that? Well, I've had this before where you've got to think about it logically. If the car's got an issue with one component, with one area of the car, airbag, ABS, it, it might not allow the other faults to go until you've cleared them. And I had it on a Range Rover once where I just could not clear a problem with the air suspension. But I had other faults in there which I thought were completely unrelated. I had an ABS problem, I had a problem with the steering angle sensor, but I found that they were somehow all interlinked. And even when I cleared them all, I still had that fault on the dash. And this is the Range Rover I'm talking about, but this is what I've learned, and hopefully I'm trying to give you this little bit of information. What I then found was, if I cleared it in the right order, 
then the air suspension light disappeared off my Range Rover and I think that's a little bit like what's just happened here there was four main areas there we had the airbag fault which I did purposely I pulled the wire underneath the seat because I wanted to see the airbag light come on ironically it didn't come on the dash but nevertheless the fault was there historically then we had a problem with the, with the pedal with the implausible signal and that was then talking with the brake pedal so the accelerator and the brake pedal those two they weren't happy about that and uh, there were some other things as well but nevertheless the faults are off the dash that's the main thing and that's down to my Autel now the reason I did this little video is because I wanted to show you that the diagnostic tools that you can get these days they're pretty damn good this one is my launch and I'm still really really happy with that but you saw the level of detail that I went into with my Autel MaxiCon now that's not to say that this launch couldn't do the same thing what I was trying to show you was on the launch there is a standalone generic OBD2 where you can actually see certain codes and if it's just one code then maybe you can kind of clear it no problem at all but when you want to go a bit deeper what what I could have done with this launch if this Fiat was my other car that I was going to use all the time and the Mercedes as well this has got Mercedes preloaded on it and I bet you if I had the Fiat software on this it would have gone to the level that my Autel Maxicom also would have had so don't shy away from this thinking, oh, I never cleared the codes. I had to get the bigger boy out. It doesn't work that way. If I had the software, I think I would have still been in for a really good chance. So today, the Autel Maxicom saved the day. And as I said, I'm still very happy with this launch. And one of the reasons I wanted to point out and do this video is that there is a video coming up very soon of the Big Brother version of this. I've got the Elite Pro coming. It's bigger in size than this. It does a hell of a lot more than this. And it comes, importantly, preloaded with pretty much every single car on the planet. That's coming up really soon. Have a little think about subscribing because I'm gonna go through that in detail. And I'm gonna compare the Elite Launch, this bigger brother, compared to my Maxicon 808. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Let's move on, cause it's time to move on.